Hello friends, welcome back. I'm Susan Clifton. I'm here in my Baca studio in Pompano Beach, Florida. So I need to explain a little bit because I have a change of clothes. So you'll see later. I recorded this video last week and I messed up. You know, when you're the camera person and the person who cre who's creating the content, you sometimes mess up. You hit record when you think you're you think you're recording, but um, you're not recording. And then you are recording when you think you're resting in between and looking at your notes. So this is what happened last week. I got nothing for an intro. So here I am today. I'm going to do this intro now. In this video, I am going to talk about finding space in your tiny apartment or small home to create artwork. You need to have a dedicated space just for being creative and, and creating the work that you want, whether you're just starting out or you are a committed artist working on a very regular basis, you could still do it in a very small space. So let's get started. Before I forget, Please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment. I'm trying to grow this channel and let me know how I'm doing. Whether you're a young person just starting out and you have a tiny apartment or maybe a small house, or maybe you're an older person who's downsized and no longer has the big house because your family has, has grown up, moved away. and so you've downsized into a smaller space, but you still need a place to work. Whether you're a crafter or you're a serious artist, you still need a space to create. And I can identify with that as a creative person, whether I was taking it seriously or not, at whatever stage in my life I was, I still wanted and needed a space that I could call my own where it was safe to do creative work. So don't let the size of your space make, allow you to make excuses for not being creative. You can, uh, you can always make adjustments. So I want to give you a little bit of a story. I decided after many years of not painting that I was going to start painting again, but I was now living in a two bedroom, condo that was less than a thousand square feet. My spare bedroom was not a bedroom at all. It wasn't a guest room. It was an office because I worked at home and it was a very full office with two computers, three printers, two people working in there, me and my husband, lots of video equipment, all built in furniture, no room for an easel. So this was not an option. I couldn't use this spare bedroom as a guest room forward slash art studio. That was not in the, in the plan. But I was planning to start painting again and possibly I had big plans. I had big plans. I was going to do one painting a month and at the end of the year I was going to have 12 paintings and I was going to build a website and I was going to join some arts organizations, start putting my art out there. I was going to get, enter juried shows and I was going to keep improving my work and, and work as often as I could. I was working full time. So not only did I have to find space for my art, but I had to find time to do it. And I was running a business. And Saturday was pretty much it and maybe Sunday morning, but I needed space. I bought an easel and then I realized, where am I going to put this thing? Um, so I put it like in the corner of the living room, but an easel is not enough. There's art supplies. There's, you know, a little table to work off of. I mean, there's things that you need as an artist in order to create. I was not a kitchen table kind of artist. I do large paintings. And I didn't want my space to limit me into only painting something that could fit on a table. 
Now, at the time that I was first starting out, I wasn't working really large. I was maybe working in a 24 by 24, 30 by 30 size, um, or a 24 by 36, I think, was the largest I was going. And uh, that fits comfortably even on an inexpensive easel. You know, I, spent, I think I spent about $100 on an easel. And I needed some kind of cabinet or something that could hold art supplies. So I found this cabinet on uh, Craigslist. So what it is is actually a, di a dining room buffet cabinet. And it had seen better days, but I didn't, I was going to, be destroying it anyway so and I still use it today here in my studio the nice thing about it is the top opens up and it sort of expands my working space and my 30 by 60 paintings actually stretch across the top um, I can lay them out on that and I can varnish them right there or I can gesso a large um, you know, a large canvas that I want maybe more in a horizontal position. So it's a very versatile cabinet. It's got drawers and it allows me to also, it has a little cabinet uh, door that allows me to put larger um, bottles of paint or, uh, you know, tubs of gesso and stuff like that. So definitely look on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, see what people are getting rid of because we can you know, utilize um, things that other people just want to get rid of. And I would look for one of these, you know, the, these flip top diff, um, buffet cabinets, I guess they would be called. Um, the other important thing was, and I just went to Office Depot and I got this little thing on, on wheels that has drawers. And on the top, it had these little compartments that made it easy for me to put my water container on there and my, my, um, towel that I, keep, I clean my brushes on and um, because of the little indentations I didn't have to worry about the button the bucket water bucket getting knocked over onto the floor when you're working from your home you're constantly uh, worried about am I getting paint on the floor um, you don't want to knock over a water bucket the nice thing about the corner of the living room also is I have very very large sliding glass doors there and the southern light is just beautiful to work in front of I do kind of miss that that window because it was great light to work at and now I'm at the studio I do still have a very big window right over here um, and it's plenty of light and I have good daylight bulbs in my ceiling fan above me so there's lots of light here I don't really have to worry too much about that but I do miss the view from my window and um, but I, I'm really enjoying my art studio as well. So the other problem you have is as you're creating all this artwork unless you have empty walls like where are you going to put them? So um, when you live in a small space or a small house you might not have a garage and plus the garage is not the safest place to keep artwork. I've a friend of mine shared her story last year. She, she kept storing her art in the garage and wasn't really, um, and, and this is for many, many years, probably 25 years, she kept putting things in the garage, in the garage, paper, canvas, whatever. Last year she was uh, remodeling the house and also deciding to set up like a real studio inside the house and she got all the stuff out of the garage and found out a lot of it was ruined by mold. Remember there's no air conditioning in the garage. So, so that's not the right place to store your artwork. Now in the beginning it's not a problem and the greatest thing is it gives you incentive to enter some shows. If your work is always hanging somewhere then it's not a problem in your living space so get it out there and get it on other people's walls for as long as you can so that you don't have to worry about storing it and plus it allows you to ha have more exposure to more people in the beginning you might want to start by working a little bit smaller so that you don't have a storage issue if money isn't a problem you can always get a public storage unit in an air-conditioned facility 
I had uh, a little bit of money to do that. There was a place very like within five minute drive from my house, my apartment. And I would immediately, after I finished a painting and had it photographed and then varnished, I would immediately put it in storage. That way I didn't take ownership. I was afraid that if I hung it on my wall in my living room, bedroom, whatever, I would, it would be like taking ownership and then I wouldn't want to sell it. Another thing you have to worry about is storage of your art supplies. So that was one of the reasons why I got that cabinet. Originally, I was only thinking of a place to put the art supplies and I wanted something with drawers and a shelf and a, and a cabinet. Um, but you know, you really have to be as organized as possible. So I also got a little um, carry bin, which I still have, it's right here. And this sat on top of the cabinet and it kept all of my bottles of paint. And I limited myself to just what fit in this container when I was uh, working from my apartment. So I didn't have the option of buying really large containers uh, for my paint. And, um, you know, it, but I love it. It, it kept me sort of uh, pared down. I also was in the habit of keeping my brushes in like a an old crock type of uh, container that originally had a lid and I just took the lid off of it and kept my brushes in there. And it didn't look so bad in my living room. I, I kind of liked the way it looked. So it didn't bother me that those two things sat on the top of this cabinet while everything else was underneath. And I did keep larger things of paint inside the cabinet. The unit that had the casters um, where I put my water bucket also had some drawers so I would keep picture hanging uh, supplies because sometimes uh, some of the venues where I was going to be hanging my work expected me to hang the work so I had this little kit that I kept in the top drawer and that included all my supplies and then I had like a you know, rags I kept in the bottom drawer and, you know, just different things that I might need um, close at hand in order to uh, do my work. So the other, the other thing that you really should be thinking about when working from your home uh, and in a small space that's maybe part of another room is you really should try to keep it tidy. Um, but also you want the convenience of at any time you feel like painting in the evening, on Saturday, whenever, you can just walk over there and start working. Um, but keep your brushes clean, keep everything neat and tidy. And um, I was guilty of sometimes making a mess over there and leaving it a mess. Um, but then I was forced to every once in a while clean it all up again, make it nice, especially if people were coming over. So it is possible. You can work, um, as you could see from one of my pictures, um, that uh, I've worked 30 by 60 in that little space. As long as it fit on the easel, I was able to do it. The most challenging that I did, and this is a painting that is still hanging over my sofa, um, was a very large, I think it was 48 by 60 and pretty much took up more than that corner. So it really, for a week, it, uh, took up a big portion of my living room. So remember, absolutely no excuses. No matter how small your space is, you can make a place where you can create. If you're a crafter, you're not working on 30 by 60 paintings. You really, any desk will do, right? Find yourself a little, you know, go, go flea market or something and find yourself an old school desk with some drawers and uh, a top where you're not gonna worry about ruining it. You could also go to Ikea and get a nice table and it's cheap enough that you don't care if you ruin it or you can cover it with plastic or whatever. But if you are really looking to be an artist and really want to start working um, towards 
um, a career as an artist, it can still be done even in a small space. Oops, I lost my light. You gotta love it. In this building, they have all the lights that sort of uh, are motion censored. If I don't move around enough, if I don't move around, um, it just goes off in the middle of talking. All right, so now it's time for our art marketing beat. That's what I've decided to call it, art marketing beat. So this week I wanna talk about growing your mailing list. Now, hopefully you have a website, and if you do, you should have one of those little pop-up things that reminds people to subscribe to your mailing list. Now, even, even when you have that, and even though they automatically close it most of the time, so you have to give them a little bit more incentive because they think that you're just gonna spam them. You're gonna keep sending them you know, emails and they really don't wanna be bothered with you. So give them some more incentive. First of all, re, you know, tell them that you're not gonna be bothersome. You're not going to be sending them a million emails and then give them something for free. So what I do is I have this print that is on an eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, right now it's in a frame, but um, if it was not in the frame, you could see up at the top, I have a little copyright notice that's being covered by the mat. And, um, and it has my, at the bottom, it has my web address and all that kind of stuff. So in case they forgot where they got this, they can always find their way back. Um, but they can print this easily on their inkjet and then they can frame it in this nice little frame. It's made for a, a five by seven frame. You can get this anywhere, Target, Michaels, Joanne Fabrics, you, you name it, wherever they sell um, these little frames, you can get a five by seven frame and this will fit in there. So you should create something like this with one of your most popular pieces so it has been successful for me. Since I've put that up there, I get a lot more um, signups. So the way that works is you set it up in your mail program like MailChimp or Constant Contact, and they always have a welcome email that after somebody subscribes, it sends them an email thanking them or asking them to, um, I think it's like called, uh, like a opt-in confirmation email or whatever. And in that email, you can customize it and you can have a link to this print. Now, if you don't know how to create that link, you can always upload it to Dropbox and then copy the link from Dropbox and use that to create your download. It's that simple. You should give it a try. That's this week's mar art marketing beat. So thank you for staying all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, just a reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, especially if you like these marketing beat at the end. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments below and uh, let me know how I'm doing. See you next time. Bye-bye.